This is the most beautiful and perfect bike I have ever made. This is just the most finished bike that I've ever made. I just think it looks really good and I'm really proud of the way that it came out. And every time I look at this bike and I see it uh, you know, at home or while I'm riding it or whatever, it just makes me feel really proud that I, that I made something like this. It's certainly not the most beautiful bike in the custom bike frame building world, but uh, I'm really happy about it. It's got this ma magical paint job from the, the guys at um, Black Magic Paint in Portland, Oregon. And it costs a lot of money to get a paint job like this, but you know, Prior to this, I was getting everything powder coated single color, and that looks nice, but it just it's not the same as this. I was sticking on vinyl decals, but here I have my, my finished head tube badge with the, the snake wearing sunglasses, right? I think it kind of com communicates what the brand is about. You know, it's a little bit, it, it takes everything seriously, but like not everything too seriously. And I got my, my logo here, you know, I just, uh, this is a, a Futura font that I modified the C and the O myself to get the the shape that I wanted and I've always been real proud of the logo I thought it looks good and then they actually painted it in right and uh, I got my strike excellence like, tagline on there right it's a Cobra Cobra strike ah, right but uh, it, I don't know you know I, I knew that I wanted sort of a all-road adventure kind of bike and I knew that I wanted these tires the WTB Nano 40 millimeter tub tubeless tires they have a center ridge that rolls pretty smooth on the pavement and they got some knobs and when they're uh, when they're tubeless, you can run them at low pressure off-road, so it's really a good all-around tire for this sort of bike. Uh, the tire technology has come a long way. There's a lot more options now, but I made this in here like a year and a half ago, and it's just TIG welded steel. Uh, I think the tubing is, uh, the front triangle is different true temper tubes that I had on the shelf. This was the first bike that I built for uh, an NV Composites carbon fiber fork. And you know, this is different than a lot of the bikes that I made because from the start, I bought all new parts, all new components for it. And I, you know, I planned on spending a fair amount of money on the paint job and I just kind of went uh, I was trying to make a more finished, more all out, you know, true representation of what I was after with fewer compromises. I felt like if I was going to break through in the frame building world, I needed to really kind of step it up a notch and go from making stuff that was functional and practical and, and maybe like solid to stuff that was a little more beautiful and refined and finished. And I think I, I think I did that better with this than I have with the other ones. And I just get excited when I look at it, you know, the, 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 having made something like this and then getting to ride it is really cool. I used to do more of this kind of riding. After I made this bike, I got a lot more interested in mountain biking, and that, that kind of took over more. And then I was wishing that I had built a mountain bike, like a, a hardtail with a suspension fork instead of this. So, um, you know, that's the next one I got to make. One of the things that I did with this that I thought was really cool was the single bend rear end and if you look here like at the the type here it's kind of angular and blocky and most of the tubes are pretty straight you know even the fork it's kind of more rounded but it's it's a straight leg and so on the rear end of a bike you can do s-bend stays that have a curve to them and you can do curved bridges and that stuff looks beautiful when it's done right there's a lot of builders who do that well but i wanted that more straight line angular aesthetic uh, the, the precursor to this bike was one that had uh, a segmented steel fork and uh, that's got more of a square shoulders angular look to it and so I was trying this on the previous bike and then I refined it even more on this one and I think it just looks awesome. I'm really happy with the way that this came out and if I could have I would have even done that more on the chain stays to give it even more of that straight line look. One of the things that I tried with this bike was uh, I, I was seeing from uh, companies, you know, bigger companies that post their geometry specs on the website, they would have kind of a high bottom bracket for a, like a gravel bike, an all road bike. And I was thinking, you know, if it's really primarily a road bike and you might ride it on gravel roads or not and some light trails, you're not log hopping all the time. And so you want to really push the bottom bracket down as low as you can get away with so that uh, you have a lower center of gravity. It lowers your whole body weight and everything. And so I tried a lower bottom bracket height and then pretty quickly I was riding this on like mountain bike trails and kind of wishing <laughs> that I had made myself a mountain bike and so the cranks were getting hung up on everything. But if you were actually riding a lot on the roads, it'd be, you know, valuable maybe to lower it down some so it handles and corners a little bit better. This has like all of my favorite parts. I'm not a real fancy, fancy bike guy. And I think that's part of what has made problems for me in the frame building world is uh, if you're selling a high-end refined labor-intensive product, 
it needs to kind of be high end. And I'm like, I'm not that fancy, you know? So I got Velocity wheel set. I love this wheel set. This is like sort of, a, I think it's their comp level, I forget. But it's, it's a nice build. It's not excessively nice. They set up tubeless nicely. They're relatively lightweight wheels. I really like them. They're solid. They have normal J-Bend spokes that you can get anywhere. They're, they're double butted spokes. But it's just a straightforward, solid wheel set. I like these tires. They have a nice sure-footed platform where you can release the pressure and they ride smooth. And they're also good on pavement. Avid BB7 brakes. These have been around for like 20 years or something. They're ancient. They're really solid brakes and they're pretty easy to adjust. You can move the fixed pad without a tool and the, the outside pad. Um, you know, they're just real simple. I got a SRAM Rival group set. I didn't even go with Force. Uh, I'm just not that fancy. You know, this, uh, this is an absolute black uh, narrow wide chain ring. I think it's a 44 tooth, if I remember correctly. And uh, this is somewhere in like Germany or something they machine these. And it's cool because it's eccentric. Right? It's like uh, Biopace was in the late 80s. And uh, it just, you know, it's supposed to, allegedly, uh, help, you know, through the dead spot of your pedal rotation. When you're down at the bottom here, you don't have any leverage, but on your on the power stroke, you really got it. And so they, they make it, right, eccentric so you can make better use of that. I just really love the parts on this bike. I have the, the Brooks um, C17 saddle. Uh, we had one of these on a, on a delivery bike at a bike shop I worked at. We would deliver food from the cafe. And oh man, I just, even wearing jeans, I thought this saddle was so comfortable. And it's like the only saddle I've had on my favorite bike since then. Uh, you know, if, it, if, if a saddle feels good when you're wearing jeans, you know it's a pretty good saddle. I wanted to try these kooky handlebars through the Easton, uh, what's this, 70 AX. And they're just, they got a flare to them. They kind of flare out at the bottom. They're really wide down here. It's kind of interesting. If you get in the drops and you start sprinting, you really have like a wider stance and you can really reef on the handlebars a little bit more. This is the first bike I did with the sort of beer can head tube and I wanted to do one of these for a while but I had to buy the big facer and the big pilot reamer or whatever it is for the for the park tool um, head tube finishing tool and those were a couple hundred bucks for those two things together and so you know it's just a couple it, it, I had to put a lot into this one to get this one finished you know new stuff that I hadn't done before and uh, the paint and all that I don't know I just I really like it I, I can't wait to to go this all out on the next bike that I do. And I don't know when that'll be next. If the mountain bike frame, I wanna make a hardtail mountain bike frame if I'll be able to, to go as all out on that, if I <laughs> if I wanna allocate the funds for those parts. Oh, another thing about this is it's, you know, it's got the, the one by 11 drivetrain. I just love this, you know, I don't wanna be, yeah, there, there's a place for, uh, for dual front chain rings, but you know, if you have a clutch derailleur and that wide spread on the cassette, you can, you know, I. It's got all the gearing I need. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 this is plenty fancy for me. I think a lot of people would say that's an incredibly fancy bike, but in the custom bike world, it gets kind of stupidly fancy sometimes. And it's just, it's hard for me to relate to that. And this here is, is just a, a collection of all my favorite stuff. I got the Time ATAC pedals. Really like these, you know, they're just real simple mountain bike pedals that hold the cleat well. And I'm used to them, they clip in well. Uh, yeah, it's just got it where it counts. So these are Paragon Machine Works Sintase dropouts for 142 by 12 rear hub. And if you're not aware of these, they're really clever. The way that the derailleur hanger bolts on is really clever. They're made so that rather than the derailleur hanger failing, this bolt will fail. So that's one cool thing about them because the, the bolt is easier to replace and, uh, and it's lighter weight and, and whatever. The other cool thing is that this little aluminum insert is concentric and it slides in there and it holds this side of your your uh, your your axle your skewer whatever and um, if if through the welding process or your your fixture isn't accurate or whatever if one of your chainstays ends up being a little bit longer than the other your wheel won't center back here and that's not a good thing and it can be tricky to get that just right but if you end up with that situation this little insert comes in three flavors there's concentric like this and then there's two eccentrics of varying degrees one of them I think is a half millimeter eccentric and the other one's a whole millimeter eccentric and what it allows you to do is get this wheel if it's not sitting in plane with the frame if it's like 
you know, kicked out one way or another. You put in the eccentric, one of the eccentric ones, and then, and then by when you twist it around and pinch it in position, it allows you to get that wheel pretty close to being right in plane with the frame again. And so that's a hack, but if you're beginning frame building and it's hard for you because you don't have all the right tools and all the years of experience, that's a really good hack to have up your sleeve. I might do a whole video about that eventually, but for now, really good thing to know about. The main tubes on this bike, I think were true temper. There was stuff I had around. And these are thinner wall tubes than what I usually had welded in, TIG welded into a frame. I think that these are 747. So the butts are 7 tenths of a millimeter thick and then 4 tenths of a millimeter thick in the middle of the tube. I, I want to say they're both 747 for the top and the down tube. The frame is kind of springy. Uh, that's, you know, <laughs> that's my finding with these. But, you know, welding these is trickier to get a good weld without burning through and, uh, you know, it really it came out pretty good actually. I was surprised at how easily these welded together. I used heat sinks and it came out nicely and I was really quite happy with that. So th this is an ISO tab for the disc brake. And um, you know, a lot of times people would brace this by putting a tube between the seat stay and the chain stay if they were gonna mount the brake on the seat stay because all that brake force kind of wants to bend this tube. And you see that sometimes these uh, bikes with disc brakes can fail from that. Now this is a 140 rotor, it's a smaller rotor. And um, uh, my idea was if I used a longer, uh, a longer disc brake tab, it would distribute the force over a longer span and it probably wouldn't fail. I don't think this will fail and uh, it hasn't failed yet, certainly. But, uh, but anyway, you know, just it's a little bit more of a trick because you have to put some bends into this plate so that it meets up with the tube nicer and then you have to grind it to get a nice tight fit so that over the length of it, your welds, uh, you know, you, you don't want a big gap in there as you go to weld it. I have some tricks about that. I might do a video about that at some point. So anyway, this bike is fucking sick, and I am so into it, and I'm so proud of it. I wanted to share it with all of you, and to point out some of my favorite things about it. And I'll do this with some other bikes. Uh, I have a commuter bike or two, and some other frames around, and so I want to point out, you know, some other details that went into these, and the thoughts behind them. Uh, just, I love frame building, and I'm excited to share that with all y'all. So um, make sure to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one. Is this thing a bike or a gymnasium full of basketballs?